my name is Hannah. I'm the social media intern for the University of Minnesota Spirit Squad, and this is Ask a Gopher. Today, Sydney, Kennedy, and Tiago are ready to answer the questions that you submitted to our Instagram story. Hey, guys. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How's everybody doing? I'm good. Doing all right. I'm doing good well. How are you, Hannah? I'm pretty good, thanks. Good. Are you ready to get started? Yes. <laughs> cool. I'm excited. Awesome. All right, let's jump in. Um, so first question, what are you guys doing to stay fit over the summer? Um, I guess something I've been doing is I do a lot of, I watch a lot of like YouTube workout people, which is funny because her name is Sydney Cummings and <laughs> I laughed because me and Kennedy have, like, it's like me and Kennedy put together. So it's hilarious, like watching those videos and she has like the same name as us, but like she has really good workout videos. And then recently I've been adding in running. So that's what I've been doing all summer. Ken and I actually got into running lately. Um, we were talking about a couple of years ago that we just always, we've always had to run, but then over quarantine, we got this new app on our phones and then we're kind of like pushing each other, which is pretty cool. And also, um, I live in a condo here. Um, I live in Brazil, so I can't go back yet. Um, but I met two uh, friends that live like a couple houses down the road and we've just been working out together every day outside. Um, so it's like, for a couple months, I was just working out by myself. Now I have like two gym partners, which is pretty cool because you can just like spot one another and hold each other accountable. So it's been pretty fun. Yeah. And like Tiago said, I've been running too. I mean, it's not our favorite thing to do, but I figured like, especially during quarantine, like how am I going to better myself during the season? There's no better way to do it than to do something, I guess, that I wasn't very passionate about, but I have found a passion now in running. And I feel like I feel way more... I guess fit because of it. Like I've seen such a difference in such a short time. And I noticed every time I've been running, I keep making small personal like gains. Like either my first mile was faster or I'm running faster as a whole or I'm running longer. And so that was like, that's really rewarding for me. But also, um, I am grateful enough to have a little home like gym in my basement or wherever, like my dad's house or my dad's girlfriend's house. So I've been doing that. I've just been casually lifting or I've been grateful enough to go back into the gym that I work out, Planet Fitness. So I've been there occasionally too. And also, um, Ken said about her like small accomplishments every day. Every other day, she's going to send us a snap and like, oh, I just got a new fast smile. Like, oh, I just went for the longest time tonight. And like, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Thanks, Tiago. That's so cute. Okay, so the next question is, how do you manage um, balancing school, work, and cheer um, all at once? I know a lot of you have jobs during the school year, and then that can also apply to, like, over the summer while you guys have been working out, how have you been balancing um, all the work that you have to do at home, um, the different schedule of quarantine for some of you, things like that? Um, during this, okay, so ever since, like, high school, I mean, even middle school, I like to keep myself busy, because then I'm a lot better with my time management, because then I have things to juggle, and it makes it a lot easier to, like, put things in priorities, and say, like, this is the first thing I need to do, which is school. School is, like, my top priority, so I always make the most time for that, and, like, even a little extra time, so I know that I'm going to get it done, and then, obviously, it's like, and then obviously cheer comes next. So, I mean, those are pretty easy to put into time management skills because we have a set schedule for cheer. So we know when we have practices. So it's a lot easier to say, I'm going to get this assignment done before practice. Oh, I'm going to study three hours before practice and then like give myself an hour after practice to just hang out and then I'll go to bed and be fine. And then this summer I'm taking a summer class, which <laughs> I'm, I mean, it's a summer class. So who's, ever really excited to take a summer class. It's not that fun, but I'm glad I'm taking it because then it's going to be a lot less of a load during the school year, especially in the fall, because cheer is so, like, obviously it's, this is like our season, the fall. I mean, all football games, like we spend most of our time practicing for football games and then practicing for nationals. So um, it just gives me a lot more time to just like relax a little bit when I have a summer class that like gets rid of all that stuff. But Honestly, the summer class has been so hard and it's so demanding with my time, especially when I have work. It's like 
I mean, I've been able to like get them done when I have my free days. So I just like make sure I pick the perfect timing for everything. I mean, so it's pretty easy when you like to be busy. So. <laughs> yeah, I think this semester can get very hectic depending on how many classes you're taking. And if it's the fall, obviously it tends to be a little busier because since that all the, the practices that we have and football games. But I think um, at least to me, I went to our coaches and said that um, I had a lot going on with school and um, at one point I wasn't doing too well either so that I probably needed a little more time and they were very understanding. They said that if I needed to take like one day off um, coming up, like they perfectly understand, like I didn't have to be um, with them all the time because schools are a top priority. So um, they understood that and they're very um, flexible to make sure that I was getting good grades. And also, um, I, yeah, I have a job during the semester, but I found a job that I can study at the same time um, that I'm there, um, usually. And also, yeah, my, my boss has been very understanding all the time that um, our schedules are, <laughs> can get crazy sometimes. And I think it's just, yeah, it's, it's about finding flexibility and um, people that, that are gonna support you, which are plenty on, on campus. Yeah, I find that you can study in groups with other athletes and hang out with Spirit Squad members who've maybe taken a class that you're taking and can help you with that kind of stuff. For sure. I know we all study together at like the, the athletic building. And I love when I get invited to that because it actually motivates me because I'll be the first one to admit and Cindy can vouch for me. I am the worst at time management. <laughs> I'm the worst yeah. <laughs> in the world. Hello, Kennedy Cummins. That is me. Um, so honestly, I think having cheer in the fall really does motivate me to get my stuff done because I don't want to be up at, I am a late night, I'm a night owl, but I do not want to be up at four in the morning when I've got to work out at six doing homework because that's what I would usually do. So honestly, having cheer like three to four times a week, right? I think in the fall really keeps me motivated and makes me like do my work as soon as I get home or find my gaps where I can fit in some homework. And honestly, um, they probably don't see it, but they do make a big impact on my life as my roommates. Like I see Sydney, she is my roommate and we have another girl on the team, Corinne Creer, who is also our roommate and our other roommate, Sally. They are doing homework constantly. And so when I walk in, I'm doing homework and I'm doing nothing. I feel so guilty. So they, they kind of push me to do my homework in that way. Um, and keep me motivated so I don't fall behind. <laughs> Sorry, as much as Kendi procrastinates yeah. a little bit, you, she totally gets her stuff done. Like she's yeah. <laughs> literally yeah. like the quickest job job. writer ever known. Like she will write something in like 30 seconds and be done. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't know. As she knows, I like to be a little bit stressed and be pushing myself to the last minute, the deadline, because it helps me work. I don't know why, it's how I function, but I get the job done at the end of the day. But oh, also I took a class this past spring semester called success over stress. And it taught me like little time management things. And I actually really liked one. It was like, um, cutting my assignments into like smaller blocks. So it doesn't seem like such a big thing. And I actually kind of really liked it. And it really helped me throughout the spring. I was like, okay, I can break this assignment down into three separate blocks. And instead of it being like an hour assignment, it's now taking me 20 minutes to do like each little block. And that makes it feel like such, I don't know. It's like, less of a heavier job to do. And so I really mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, this next one is from a totally anonymous user. Um, they want to know who your favorite mascot is. <laughs> Obviously, it's going to be Goldie. I don't know what other mascot I would ever like. I mean, Goldie's just one and only. the best. One and only. Our main man, Goldie. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a favorite also, memory or like Goldie costume when he does all of his wacky costumes at games? I mean, so many. I mean, I think, I think Halloween's my Halloween, favorite by far. Halloween for sure. Halloween, Halloween did Freddie Mercury because then he did um, yeah. performance with uh, the dance team. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that was probably the best of the year. But yeah, every quarter I'm just like looking out for Goldie, trying to see what, what is going to bring out next. Yeah, instead of costume switches, I kind of love it. <laughs> ah. I mean, eight different ones during Halloween. And I'm like, how? Oh. And they're so good, too. <laughs> yeah, they're so good. They're so good. Yeah. Goldie's great. Okay, so next one. 
Um, what is your favorite team to play against? I'm going to assume this is a football question just because we play against a lot of different teams during basketball season. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's so many teams. Obviously, I'm going to say the whole, I mean, Minnesota, like U of M in general, our favorite team to play against is Wisconsin because no doubt, I mean, nothing better than a good old rivalry. But last year, Penn State, easily probably the best game, hands down, that I've ever been a part of. Yeah, Penn State was awesome. And also Iowa, especially because last fall I was at the Iowa game in Iowa, and it was not the best of times. Um, we ended up losing at the very end, and their stadium just went wild, and it was not very fun to be there at that time. So I'm looking forward to playing Iowa again and taking the dub this time. <laughs> um, for me, I'm a Wisconsin native, so I will have to say Wisconsin, even though I'm from Wisconsin. I am ride or die. My heart belongs in Minnesota. So I don't know. It's kind of like bittersweet whenever we play Wisconsin because our little better dead than red. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and so I don't know. When I get back home, I get a lot of talk and about Minnesota and Wisconsin and the acts and all that. But my freshman year, we beat Wisconsin and I was just, my chin was high. I was like, you can't even say nothing. Went home for Thanksgiving. I was like, we beat Wisconsin. So <laughs> they're always a good rivalry. <laughs> all right. So what has been one of your favorite memories from your years on the team? Let's start with Sid. <laughs> There's so many. Um... I mean, like I said, Penn State, that game was incredibly, like, one of the most memorable games I've ever cheered. And then, um, man, I guess always getting to travel with everybody. I mean, I went to Fresno this, like, my sophomore year this past year with, um, what was it, like, four of the seniors, like, four senior girls, and then the rest of us were, like, a little bit younger. And that was the quickest trip of my life, but it was so memorable because I think we were up for 24 hours total. I mean, we flew at like three o'clock in the morning down to Fresno. We were up until midnight and we just like had so many funny things happen to us. We didn't know, like it just, <laughs> like that was one way to get closer with everybody. Like all the girls that we traveled with, like that was a hilarious, fun, such a memorable time. I will never forget that funny trip. <laughs> to me, um, I think probably camp last year was one of my best memories, especially with all the guys. Because um, when we got to Wisconsin Dallas is where our camp was last year. And we got there. I think we had eight guys there. And then the rooms that we got was like one room had six people. And then the other one had like four or something like that. Maybe it was 10 people overall. Um, but there was a door in the middle that divided the rooms. So we just opened up the door 24 seven. So like all 10 guys were together like every hour of the day. And it was pretty fun because we're all so energetic. And then by the end, like the last few days of camp, everyone was dead from how much we're working, like 10 hour days of practice, like almost every day. But still we're just so happy to be with one another and just like, goofing around it was summer still so you just had like that joy and you wanted to be with people and then the girls would come and we'd just be like talking for hours and hours and um i think camp was just great overall can't wait to go back oh love camp. i didn't know you guys had two separate rooms tag. i thought it was one big room and it was like all the guys just in this big room oh, same <laughs> yeah it was in the, oh. the middle but then like you know those doors that open we didn't know yeah. that it was like together and then we just opened it up and it was one room at the end of the day Oh yeah, it looked like one room. I thought it was one room. <laughs> we, um, the big room had like two couches, I think, but only one that could be made into a bed. But then the other one also had one of those couches. So we got the couch up from one room and brought it to the bigger room. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so you, had, you had two pull-out couches in the living yeah, room. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The pull-out couch. Yeah. One was, one was from like it was one from each room, and then we just moved it all, all over oh, and shifted yeah. all the furniture around. Cute. Very cute. Um, I love camp. I think about camp all the time and I'm sad we're not going back this year, maybe next year, hopefully, but, um, hands down, my favorite memory, I talk about this all the time is, um, this actually this year, cause it happened in January, we traveled to the Outback Bowl for our, um, what do you call it? The, 
bowl game. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, playoff bowl game. Um, that was kind of cool. It was in uh, Clearwater, Florida, and we played Auburn, and that was just the funnest trip of my entire life. Like, I will cherish that trip forever and always. I talk about it to my dad. I talk about it to Sydney a lot. I Anybody who gets me talking about cheer, I always bring up that game. It was just, we had so much going on and there was never any downtime. Like we had a tug of war contest. There were so many cameras and like lights and oh my God, it was so much fun. And there was a parade that night. I remember being on the sideline, getting some water. It was terribly hot that day too, that we, on New Year's day. And I just remember going to the sideline, get a drink of water. And, um, coach Weaver was like, I having a fun time. And I was like, Weaver, I'm having the best time of my entire life. Like I was, I was like, I was happiest there. That was me and my happiest moment. Oh, I look back on it all the time. It was so much fun. And it was a long trip too. It was like five days or something. Yeah. It was really long. I threw my first tuck at that game. So that was yes, pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And even though we had some nationals practices in there, that was okay. <laughs> and yeah. And we, Oh, we got to go visit you SF and we got to yeah. hang out with them for a little bit and that was really cool to see them and meet a different team so yeah that's so fun what do you guys think is the best part about being a gopher cheerleader do you want to start Tiago because I think you started the most recently I'm interested yeah. to hear your top or um, your there's a lot of good like it's hard to think to pick like one best thing but looking back I think I most definitely have to say just the people um, because I had, I, I joined like halfway through my freshman year pretty much. And then back then, like I, I knew a lot of people always involved in a lot of different things. So I had like a bunch of different friends, but then after I joined, um, it's not like I abandoned those old, old friends. It's just that cheer becomes like such a big part of your life. And the people are just like, everyone's just awesome. So you just want to spend more time with them. And then after a while, like everything you do, you want to do with them. Um, if you're going to go anywhere, you're like, oh, does anybody want to come with me? Then like a bunch of people come and join you. And if you're not doing anything, like we're going to go to each other's place and just like hang out, do nothing together. Um, so then by now, like I know if I need anyone for anything, um, there's like 40 plus people that I can count on for literally anything. So I think um, the people is my go-to. <laughs> And you can go. Cool. Um, for me, I would say hands down, the best thing about being a gopher cheerleader is probably um, all of the like connections and the crowd interaction. I love when I see a little girl or boy lock eyes with me on the field and they're like, I don't want me to come over there. I'm like, yep, I'm going to come to you. Like, I want to come take a picture with you. Like, you just make their world. Like you see it in their eyes. And that is really the best part to me. I love interacting with like, the fans and the crowd, Ugh, it, I don't know. It just warms my heart so much. Like those little girls and those little boys like look up to us so much and they want to be us like one day. And it just warms my heart. It's so sweet. And um, obviously the people um, that I've met, like my family is right there in Minnesota. Like I wouldn't be here. So without them, like a lot of people know my freshman year, I had a little bit of a rough going and I almost backed out of coming to the university. But at the end of the day, I realized how fast, um, my gopher family became like my second family and they kind of pushed me. I was like, I can't leave them. Like I already feel like that's part of my home and that's where I belong. And so they, you guys helped me all day, every day. And I miss you guys so much. And so, I don't know, even like the coaches too, they're such a big support system. Like I have gone to coach DeThorn crying to her so many times. She's like my second mom up there. Like the coaches really do care about us and it just makes you feel way more comfortable and just like a piece of you belongs there. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's the same thing for me. Like, the atmosphere of being a gopher cheerleader is insane. Like, like they said, like, the crowd interaction. Like, we have such diehard fans. Like, it's crazy. Like, the front row of every game, you will see some person, somebody who's just insanely, like, decked out. Like, anything gopher gear that like, you can find, they're wearing it. And it's just it literally just puts a smile on your face the whole game. Like I can never lose a smile when I'm at a game. So, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Like, it's just crazy how, I mean, anything being at the U is just such a great place to be. So I'm very thankful to be your cheerleader here. You have so many opportunities that I can't even 
count and not many people get to do this or will ever get to say that they get to do this and all of the doors that being a girlfriend cheerleader opens for you like you can't even imagine like there's been many times where I'm like whoa I didn't know we get to do that or like this is what this is about and I I just have fallen in love with every part of it and every day it's like a new little journey and I'm grateful for it. <laughs> That's awesome. Speaking of opportunities, what are some perks to be Um, I mean, we have a lot. I mean, we have a chance to, oh, gosh, <laughs> there's a lot. I mean, we have a chance to go to the athletic building and we have our own trainers. We have mm-hmm. our own athletic strength and conditioning coaches. Like we have people that are constantly supporting us and building us up in several different ways. I mean, we have a chance to, like Kennedy said, when we study, we go to the athletic building and we have a space filled with other athletes where we all know how hard it is like that we have to work. So it just like, we're being always surrounded by people who support us. And we have coaches who always want the best for us and are always picking out the perfect things. Like, like, I think it was was our freshman year, we had a shirt and it says, I think that was our first year. Attitude of gratitude. Was that our freshman, our freshman year? That was last year. So they encouraged me to do the work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So attitude of gratitude, like that's like the perks that we get is always like, we always make sure that we have, we're grateful for them. So everything that we get, which literally could be the smallest thing, like literally being on this team and having this family is huge perk. Like, I think that's probably like my favorite thing is having people like always being able to surround myself with like people who love me and support me. So that's a huge perk. Um, to me, I would say probably, um, like I second everything Sydney said, for sure. Um, it's very important to be grateful for that, but also, um, the travels, I think I believe in experiences a lot, but like once you do something like physically do something, go somewhere, um, learn something new, like you're going to become a much better version of yourself. So I think all the travels that we get to go to all the places we get to visit, the people we get to meet, I think that's very nice, but also this is going to sound like maybe a little superficial, but it's, it's a perk for sure. And where I come from, college athletics looks very different, like completely different. So then once I was like lifting with my gym partners here, I'm always, I'm always wearing like our practice gear. So um, our shorts, our shirts, my, our backpack, like everything. And they were like asking me if like we, we get all of this. I was like, yeah, we get just so much stuff, like so much gear every year that it's ridiculous. Like I'm so grateful for that because um, we have to go – we have to do a lot of things, aren't like practices, um, appearances, everything, but we get absolutely everything and much more than we need for that. So, um, they really go out of their way to make sure that, uh, we're prepared for everything. Yeah, definitely. I'm always worried over a year, wherever I go now, because I have so much and I'm just so grateful for it. Really crazy how much we get and how much we're blessed to like receive from Nike and everything. Um, I'll go back to what we said. The first thing that ha- popped in my head about um, opportunities or like perks is definitely the support system. Your teammates, your coaches, your trainers, everybody around you just kind of seems like a support system or someone you can go to for something. Like there's no open gap where I'm like, I don't know who I should go to for this. You know, like everyone is there to help you and there's always um, help if you need it. But another thing that I would say is one of the biggest perks is honestly, the life lessons I've learned from my two years on being on the team. I've learned so much in being a part of this program. I have grown so much as a person and and become so independent um, being a part of this team. I like, it kind of um, blows my mind how much I've learned from cheerleading. I like, it's not just cheerleading at the end of the day, at the end of the day, like our program um, is about like, growing as a person and being independent, how to be a good person. And our coaches have done an amazing job at that. And so I'm really grateful for the person I've become because of this program and I'm only halfway done. So I'm excited to see where like the rest of the program can take all of us. So, yeah. Awesome. Okay. So any tips for people who would like to try out in the future or maybe have tried out in the past and haven't quite made it? Um, what are some cheerleading tips, some mentality tips, things like that for them? Um, I would say the biggest thing is to always keep a smile on your face, no matter the situation or the outcome is to remember that like, no matter what, you're always going to be yourself and you're always going to be good in your own way. And 
you just got to keep remembering that, that like you're in charge of yourself and you can't let yourself get down. And to remember to like, to take tips that people are giving you, to take advice from everybody and to actually put it to use and to use it and to continuously better yourself through all situations and everything. And I think that that was probably like the biggest thing for me, even being on the team. Like I constantly like am improving and making sure that I'm always bettering myself, even if it's just something that's always important. So. Yeah, I agree. Just what Sydney said about being yourself, I think is very important because um, a big part of the team is just the, the attitude and um, all our personalities coming together. There's like real good team chemistry. So I think, um, yeah, just being yourself is very important. Make sure you're, you're true to yourself and also just keep a good attitude, especially when you're like working towards a goal. Um, try to improve yourself and not be like, Oh, I want to be like this person. No, try to be just the, be the best version of yourself that you can be. Um, because sometimes even you don't have to have like the best skills or anything, as long as you have a good attitude and you want to improve, like you generally just want to improve yourself. Um, I think that plays a, a big role because once you have that attitude, basically the sky's the limit because you're going to be working in and out. Definitely. Um, bouncing off of all of that, um, one of the main things I've learned is to not get in your head. I am a huge advocate for getting in my head and getting frustrated when I don't get something on maybe the first or second try. And my coaches and my teammates have told me over and over again, Hey, get out of your head. You're not perfect. You know, like practice makes perfect and you're trying something new. And as long as you keep trying, people see that and that doesn't go unnoticed. And, um, also a big thing that we've been talking about is your mind is going to go a lot farther than your body wants you to. So as long as you keep a strong mind and you have a lot, I mean, I feel like we all have so much like love for truly in our heart. So your heart and your mind are going to take you a lot farther than your body wants you to. So I think that just kind of keeps me motivated because a little story I'll give you is um, I came into uh, trying out for the team and I didn't have my round off handspring full. Um, and I mean, I was okay with that at the time. I was like, I'm never going to get that. And that's okay with me. But then um, a couple months on the road, my coaches kind of pushed me to get that. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to get the skill. But I just kind of pushed me to throw it someday. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to get better. Like, I'm just going to like kind of coast. And I did. I threw it. And I actually threw it this past season at nationals. And that was a goal I had for myself this year. And I achieved that goal. So it kind of shows that like, you can teach an old dog new tricks and you don't ever have to tap out and that you really set the bar for yourself. Like Tiago said, the sky is the limit once your heart and your mind are there. Mm -hmm. Oh, adding on to Kennedy, like she said, they like the coaches really like to see like you keep trying. Like they want to see you that like, that's their biggest thing. Like when I tried out, I didn't have a tuck. I didn't have a round off hand tuck. Like I had really nothing. And so what was important is that I was like, okay, I'll learn it. Like, and I was throwing a tuck with them. Like I had a spotter and that was something that they saw in me. They're like, they ha she has potential. She has the want to gain these skills. And that's something that they see. I mean, it doesn't even have to be in a skill either. Like in your motions, they see you trying to get like tighter and stronger in them. And like in anything you do, like that's, they like really look at your mindset and how you look towards the future. So that's important. Being coachable. That's key. Being coachable. Because <laughs> everybody wants to see you succeed. Like no one's going to give you a tip to see you fail or try to tell you the wrong thing. Everybody, that's something that's great about our family. It's never like a competition. We're all pushing each other to be better. Like no one wants to see each other fail or like, because we're all going to grow together as a team. So if one person grows, it doesn't mean the rest of the 39, 40 of us are growing either. We all have to grow together. So it's kind of, it's very refreshing to see that we all like want to push each other to be the best that we can be to our ability. That's awesome. All right, guys. Well, we have come to our last question. This one is a biggie. What does it take to be a cheerleader? Let's start with you, Ken. Okay. Give me a second. Let me think about what it's meant to me. Um, pretty much the biggest thing to me is kind of your attitude and your heart. Like I, I think about my game scenarios and when we're like 
um, Coach Flack has given the tap on the football players' heads and he's given the go okay and it's like that's our time to go and to run. And I just think like, okay, like it's time to go. Like time time to bring my A game, time to bring the game the face, my game face. And I don't know. I just it's almost indescribable for me because I just get the biggest smile on my face the whole game and my coach told me this to do in my first game, but I've done it every single game since is I take maybe like probably five times a game. And I just look around the stadium and what I'm experiencing. And I just realize how much happiness is inside me and how much joy is in my heart and how much I just love doing this. So I guess the biggest thing about being a cheerleader is to love what you do and do what you love. And I feel like that's the greatest thing about our team is because we all share the same passion for being a cheerleader because no one really sees what's going on behind the scenes. They all just see kind of like the, the bows, the, the uniforms, the toss and the humans, you know, you don't really think about the smiles, you know, you don't think about the hard work that's going on in our practices. So I don't know. Your heart is the biggest thing for me. You have to have the heart to be a cheerleader. It's, and it doesn't come for everybody. So, yeah. That's a good answer. <laughs> you think, like, I don't know. That's the same thing I would say. But yeah, I guess adding on to it, I mean, like she said, heart. Like, you have to be 100% in it with your heart to be a cheerleader. Like, it takes a lot more than people even know. Like, I mean, you have to smile the whole time. So technically, yeah, you have to have a lot of heart in it. Because if you're not happy in your heart, then you're definitely not going to be smiling out there. So 100%. Yeah, it's exactly like the top thing you need. But I mean, mine comes with the heart. So always important to remember, like you have to have the mentality that you're always working and you're always making sure you have a positive mindset. I mean, totally cheerleader thing, but obviously we're happy, positive, go lucky people. So technically we always have to be positive. And that's something that we all try our best to do is to constantly look at things in like the brightest light and to make sure that we're always moving forward and never getting stuck in past and always yeah just like having a great positive mindset is also a good one yeah just like the both said um it's hard and attitude i think um because the amount of times that we hear that we're always on um like for anything even for even for practices um they said that we're always on um because there's that um cheerleader expectation in a way. Um, I mean, it, it is, it's our job to um, bring joy to people. Um, so I think if you're not happy, like truly, truly happy, um, you can't, you're not, you can't fake happiness, you know? Um, so then when it's pregame and you're just walking around the stadium, um, talking to all these fans, taking pictures, um, you gotta be, you gotta be in the moment. And um, it takes that attitude that um, you want to be there. Um, you want to be with those people um, when it's, when you're in a routine and things are not going to go your way. Um, in fact, they're not ever going to go your way hundred um, percent. You need that attitude that if something comes down, um, you need to keep that smile on your face and be like, okay, let's just move on. And I'm going to do better the next time. Um, and that's not easy before cheer. I never joined a sport. I never played any sport that was like this, that needed so much. Um, you needed to be in that, in the moment so much. Um, because if things didn't, didn't go my way, I could, you know, I could swear I could, um, I, I could act like I didn't like that at all, but in cheer, you have to be always on. Like you cannot show um, that you're unhappy with what you just did. Um, so I think attitude and just um, showing people that you want to be there, that like, that's who you are. I think that's huge. It's a huge one, Tiago. I agree with that a lot. It's really hard not to like when someone doesn't go the way you want it to not show the disappointment to think that, Oh, like I was like, that was supposed to happen. You know, it's like, really, it wasn't. You're like, upset because it feels like you just like kind of I don't know like not maybe let the people down but like maybe let your team down or like that's not what I wanted to show them you know so mm -hmm. it's really hard to not show that on your face or on your character so yeah that's a great one right yeah exactly all right well do you guys have any last messages for the Gopher fans watching have a great summer <laughs> 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 that was the first thing that came to my mind. Um, I hope to see you guys soon at a game or when this is all over and we can go back to normal. Or see you guys at like a camp or something. We can finally do that. 
Yeah, I'll yeah. Totally meet so many more fans. I want to meet you guys. Yep. Yeah, just make sure you're always doing something to make yourself better. Yes. And yeah, just keep rowing the boat. Go go for it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of you when we get back to practices. Thank um, you, Anna. Yeah, thank I love you, Anna. This. I have so much fun. Thanks for everyone who sent questions. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I appreciate them all. They were really good. <laughs> they were yeah. really good. Keep sending them. Because I think we're doing more in the future, right, Hannah? We're going to these every week, I think. So keep sending your questions. Keep sending your questions. We love answering them. Like, I had so much fun doing this. Yeah. It really got me to think. <laughs> if there's no question box up on our um, Instagram story, always feel free to slide into those DMs. I got mm -hmm. you. Um, and we'll get those questions into our next round of athletes. Exactly. Yay. Cool. cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you Thanks, next Anna. Time. Thanks, Anna. Bye. 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 Bye.